Hello, this is the next video in a series I'm calling uh, Transformations of Random Variables. And in this video, we're going to specifically look at a transformation called linear transforms of random vectors. And so let's, let's define what that means. So let's let x be uh, a random vector, k-dimensional random vector, and c be a k-by-k -K matrix of real constants. And uh, the elements of the c matrix can generically be represented by cij, where that's the ith row and the jth column. So that isolates that particular element of this matrix c. And then you can also represent the whole matrix and just put parentheses around CIJ. Uh, we're going to let the determinant delta be the determinant of C. And then we're going to let H be this transformation from K space to K space such that Y is equal to some transformation of the random vector, but specifically it's going to be this matrix times this vector. So this is the transformation, and it's called, it's called a linear transformation. Now, I'm also going to try to do the notation in scalar format as well as matrix notation. Um, here, yi represents one element of this vector, and each element of y can be represented by this sum. And this sum says take the ith row of c, um, and then sum over each column times each respective x vector. So what it means is take the ith row of c times this x. That's what this means, and that's what, how you get the yi. So this is, this is by definition what a linear transformation of a random vector is, and our goal is to find out what the distribution of y is. And we're going to do that on page 3, but first I want to go through some properties of linear transformations and then uh, even uh, give details on a more specific linear transformation called orthogonal transformations. So uh, first, generically, let's look at um, if, if the determinant of C or delta is not equal to zero, then we can uniquely solve for the X's, okay? So if we have Y equal to this, and then we have pre-multiplied by C inverse, then we get X by itself. And you can do that when the determinant is not zero. It's a, it's a uh, non-singular matrix. So you can have X is equal to uh, C inverse of Y. Now, we're going to let D be this C inverse. So then we can generically write uh, this transformation or this, you know, I often call it back solving for X um, in scalar notation like this. So the ith element of X is represented by this sum, which says take the uh, ith row of D, which here, times Y. That's what this represents. We're going to do that for all I, J, uh, from 1 to K. Another little uh, um, identity or, or note is that the determinant of C inverse, which is this, is equal to 1 over the determinant of C. And a quick little proof of that is 1 is equal to the determinant of the identity matrix. That's, that's a fact. And then the identity matrix is actually C times C inverse, right? You get the identity matrix. But then the, pro the determinant of the product of matrix is, is the, de the determinant of the product is the product of the determinants. And then if you divide by uh, uh, this value here, then you get the result. And we're going to make use of that in a, in a few minutes. Um, now, orthogonal transformations, it's kind of a... It's a type of linear transformation of random variables. And what that means is that the columns and rows have special properties. So if we let C represent this, so it, it's K by K. So this is a vector of length K, and this is a vector of length K. So now if we, cro or if we multiply this vector times 
any other vector, it's going to be zero. And if we multiply it by itself, we get one. Okay, so that is a th orthogonal transformation. And so you can write that matrix in matrix form like this. You take the ith vector, the transpose of the ith vector times the jth vector, and that equals zero if they're not equal, and at one if those are equal. And then in scalar form, you can write it like this, that what you're doing is you're summing over each element here times each element here, and the addition of that is either zero if i and j aren't equal, and one if they're equal. Um, but to be an orthogonal transformation, this also works for the rows. So if we let if we represent C by this, where C1 is a you know vector, a k-dimensional vector, so it's transpose, so it goes this way, and then the and then the kth row is also a k-dimensional vector that goes this way, then the whole thing is a k by k matrix. And then the same thing, you it and then if you multiply two rows together. They're zero if they're different rows, and if it's the same row, so you multiply, say, row one times itself, then you get one. And then in, in, in uh, scalar notation, it's this. You're going element by element. First element here, first element there, plus the second element, second element. That's what this represents. And it's zero if the ij are not equal, and one if they're equal. So. Another property of orthogonal transformations, that means that the orthogonal means the special properties of that C matrix. If it's orthogonal, then the determinant is one. Um, now, I don't have a proof here in the interest of time, but there's, I think, plenty of videos where you can look that up. Then if uh, H is orthogonal, the, um, The inverse matrix, so this is, remember D is the inverse of C. And if it's orthogonal, the inverse of C is actually the transpose of C. And, and we'll give a little proof of that in a second. And then using scalar notation, you can write it this, that um, the ith row j element is actually equal to the, uh, remember this is the, the inverse of, oh, well I guess that'll work because D is, uh, is C inverse. Yeah, that's right. And so what that means is this, here's a little proof. And that let's let X be this vector and remember, you can back solve for it by taking the uh, inverse matrix, pre-multiply by the inverse matrix, and, then, and you get this. But generically, we're calling that D, you know, just to for not simplify our notation. But according to this uh, statement, D is C transpose. So that means the inverse of C is C transpose. Now, why? we know is a transformation C times X. And so we get this, but then since this is orthogonal, we know it's the identity matrix. And then the identity matrix times anything is that anything. And so um, then this is a true statement. And so the C inverse is C transpose when the transformation is orthogonal. Now, if, so repeating this again, so for H orthogonal, and if Y is this trans, uh, this tr uh, linear transformation, then to back solve for X, we just need to pre-multiply Y by the transpose of C. That's what this is saying. And then uh, to, for scalar notation, then each element of the y vector can be rewritten as this sum, where this represents the ith row times x. That's what this is. Um, and then 
to solve for the x's, you just take that C transpose of Y. And C transpose means you interchange these, these uh, indexes, J and I. Over here it's I and J, the transpose, you switch those. So to back solve for the X, I, you just uh, switch, the, you know, pre-multiply by uh, the transpose of, of C. So now here's another one that um, we're going to use in our second example. So two videos from now that if the transformation is orthogonal, then the sum of the Y squares is equal to the sum of the XI squares. We're going to use that to show that the sample mean and sample variance for a normal distribution are independent. That's two videos from now. So a quick little proof of that, the sum of yi squared is actually this uh, vector multiplied by this vector. You know, and But y is this transformation. And then the transpose can be distributed in to get this. Well, this piece right here is the identity matrix because it's orthogonal. And so that identity times something, you, you this kind of goes away and you get this. Well, this is the same as the sum of the xi squared. So we're done. Um, we're not going to use that video, but we're going to come back to it. That's pretty important. Um, now, to prove it with uh, scalar notation, so you have the sum of the yi squareds. So this... Uh, sum from i to 1 to k is here, but this transformation is this. So for each i, it's this sum from j equal 1 to k, and the squared, of course, stays squared. Now, since this represents times 2, that's what this is. Now, uh, the sum, it doesn't matter which way we add it, so we're going to take this uh, back through here, and that's what this is. Now, for this, we're going to take the I index and move it uh, first. And then, of course, there's no I in these X's, so it goes out front. And that's what we get here. But what's interesting is if, since X, since this is a uh, orthogonal transformation and the, the C matrix has certain properties, um, when you multiply um, rows or vectors then these are either zero or one and and it really depends upon you know if if j and l are different meaning we're on different columns then this is zero and if i and j are the same then it's one and so you, if it's zero it goes away so those sums can be reduced and if it's one then it it also doesn't affect this um, the sum because it's multiplied times the constant. Now these are the same. It, when they're different, then it's zero, and when they're the same, it's one. So they it, we just represent it with one sum, and it's x i j squared. So that's a quick little proof. Now to the main result, the theorem to find the distribution of y. So let let x be a k-dimensional random vector with PDF f of x, you know, which is greater than zero. And we're going to let y be this transformation, this linear transformation, which can be represented in matrix form like this. Now, we're going to let uh, delta be the determinant of c. And then when you back solve for x i, you get this transformation here. Now, remember the d's represent the c inverse. Uh, you know, so these are the elements of that c inverse matrix. And this is from 1 to k, and then a matrix notation, you write it like this. X is equal to dy, and then, of course, d is that c inverse. Now, the PDF of y, of the random vector y, is this. So here, here's notationally, you write it, the, the, the CDF, or not CDF, the PDF is this. But then you, then you back solve for each of these little transformations here. So when it's x1, you plug it into the first component, and that's why there's a d1j there. And then for the second component, you put it in the second, the third, the fourth, and the kth component goes here. And then you take it time the Jacobian. Well, the Jacobian is, uh, it would be the determinant 
you know, or the, you know, the uh, partial derivatives of this, and then you take the, the derivative of it. But each of those is, is since the, there's no squared or any extra terms on this, it just boils down to taking the determinant of C inverse. But remember, C inverse, the derivative of C inverse is 1 over the derivative of C, which we're representing by delta. So it's 1 over delta. And so this is it. This, so this is the theorem, and we're going to use it in the next two videos with examples. The first example I'm going to do is show that an orthogonal transformation of independent normal random variables is normal and that the yi's are independent also. So that's all I have for today. Hopefully you enjoyed it. If you did, please like the video and subscribe so you don't miss the next one. Thanks, bye.